It's just something special about it. And I just want to read you a couple of my favorite lines. Um, I'll read you the chorus first just because that's the most pivotal part. Um, it says, Because what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near? What if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise? And another one I love is, it starts out, when friends betray us, when darkness seems to win, we know that pain reminds this heart that this is not, this is not our home. And I love that one especially because uh, we have these pictures of when people would sign them and say stuff that pop they wanted to or to the family. And my Aunt Lori wrote one that was my favorite one. It was the shortest probably and the most simple, but I took a picture of it and saved it and it just said, until we meet again. And so this, this just gives you hope and to know that this isn't our home and we're going somewhere better. And then the last part is kind of repeating the chorus, but it says, What are trials of this life? The rain, the storms, the hardest nights are your mercies in, dis in disguise. And I watched a video of Laura's story actually talking about why she, why she wrote this song. Basically, her husband had been had a brain tumor, I think it was, and they had spent months after months just doing the same thing I always do, like, why, why, why? And and she said, she finally came to the realization that, you know, what if something good is coming out of this? What What is this a reason? She said specifically, it, it asks a lot of what if questions that we don't know the answer to, but just knowing that there could be a possibility gave her so much hope. Um, there, was a, there was a man, he was in the hospital, and he was on his deathbed, and his daughter called up the pastor of the local church, and, you know, pastor, my, my dad is dying, and I want you to go in and pray with him and be with him. So, he, he agreed, and he showed up, and he walks into the room, and, and there's an empty chair sitting there, so he asked the man, oh, uh, your daughter must have told you I was coming. The man's kind of confused, and, um, no, who are you? He's like, oh, I'm... I'm the, the associate pastor at your local church that your daughter goes to. I saw the empty chair and thought you were expecting me. And so the man goes, oh yeah, let me tell you about that. So go ahead and close the door. So the guy's kind of just, um, oh, all right, I guess so. So he closed the door and the man starts telling him. He's never told anybody this before, but when he was growing up and he was in, in Sabbath school and primary and everything like that, he, he never learned how to pray. He it just never got it. He never got it. He hated that fact, and so he kept trying, kept trying. And even as he grew up, the pastor would be up there preaching about the power of prayer and how amazing it was, but it just went right over his head. And so then about four years earlier, he told the, he told the man, his best friend, he told the man that his best friend came over, and he was taught, they were talking about the same thing. And the best friend suggested, well, you know, prayer is just having a conversation with Jesus, with God, like, just like you're having one now with me. So why don't you try it? setting up a chair, and then sitting across from that empty chair and just talking to it. And then he'll be talking to God. It's just like a conversation. So, I mean, the guy was willing to try anything. So he went for it, and it stuck. He loved it so much. And so he, he told the pastor, you know, I've been doing this a couple hours every day since then. And the pastor was moved. He, was, he had never heard anything like it before. So he was just deeply touched by it. And so he prayed with the man, and he, he left. And, Two days later, he got a call from the man's daughter, and he could tell something was wrong, and so he asked how she was, and she was kind of crying a little bit, and she told him, oh, my, my father passed away last night, and so he was he was so sad, and he's like, oh, I'm so sorry, he was, from the 15 minutes I was with him, I could tell he was a wonderful man, she was, yeah, but it was, it was special, he called me in, and he told me one of his corny jokes, and he told me he loved me, he kissed me on the cheek, and when I got back an hour later from the store, I found him dead. And the pastor is just so sorry. He's like, oh, my. Is there, if there's anything I can do, let me know. And she goes, well, there's, there's something weird I need to tell you. When I got back, I, I just, something didn't make sense to me. I found him, but it wasn't like normal heat. Before he died, he had crawled over, and he put his head in an empty chair. So this man, he, he found hope in talking to Jesus in a way that nobody else does. He, he found hope by actually sitting with him and talking to this empty chair. And 
we all need a way to find hope. We all need a way to revive our hope. And it, it's not always just going to be hearing about Jesus, because some of us have heard about Jesus our whole lives. But the way I want to share is, is a way that Papa found hope. And my dad read these at his memorial, but I want to read them again, because I really like them. The first one's a quote from Illinois. It says, Those who are called to endure the hardest trials, to bear the heaviest burdens, to meet the greatest difficulties, are those whom God trusts. The next one is 2 Timothy 4.17. And it says, But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear. And then the last one, which was his favorite one, was Romans 15, 13. It says, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in Him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. So when your storm is at its worst, when you don't think you can take anymore, take hold of Jesus. Just take that risk of faith and just rest your head in His lap. Amen. 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 God, I just want to thank you for this, this church service. We got to come worship you, and that we have the freedom to do that in a beautiful place like this. And we ask that you please bless us and protect us for the rest of the days and the next week to come. And we can't wait for that day where there's no clouds left. Love you, God. Amen. Amen.